Death Watch. Okay, welcome back. Um, if you remember last time, um, Fenrith, Casimir, and Rohan, and the two hobgoblin monks had found solace, a, a brief uh, rest in a cavern behind a secret wall after a lot of heavy fighting where everyone had been pretty wounded. And so finally they found a place where they could um, rest and try to heal up. Um, so if you remember, um, I'll share that map again. And you were down here. There was a hatch in the ceiling or di the floor, sorry, leading down. And that is where you had uh, decided to take your rest. And then Graham had gone on his own adventure and made his way through a, a complex using the rafters, the support rafters in the hallways in the throne room where he had overheard a conversation between a beholder, um, a mysterious man, and a extremely well-armored halfling and a mysterious red-haired woman. In that conversation that he um, watched over, the, the group tried to attack the mysterious man by surprise. And this surprise included the boulder opening its main eye at him. But the if attack was ineffective, and the man um, quickly put down that little rebellion and then punished the boulder by chopping off um, some of its eye stalks before instructing them to get back to work and not to upset him again. And then he departed and so did the rest. So Graham continued on uh, across those rafters through the complex until he found this area where his elven eyes alerted him to the presence of a, um, a secret door. And he opened it and that led him into a small room with bookshelves covered in dust that hadn't been used in many, many years. And that's where he is currently. So Graham, what would you like to do? Well, I think uh, I've demonstrated Graham's propensity for books and whatnot. So I'll just start rifling through all that till something explodes. <laughs> but here's actually my thought. Uh, Graham's the sort of character that would push on despite his physical state, and unless he puts himself to bed by going through his routine, he won't until he literally passes out. So my thought is that he would grab up some of these books or whatever and start looking through them, and being in that sort of more relaxed state might drift off, because it seems like I've been up for a while, or at least I don't feel too good. Well, it yeah. has. Well, yeah. it's hard. <laughs> yeah, it, it's one of those where it's hard to tell if uh, we've been up for a while or right. it's just the combat <laughs> yeah. and it's actually only been five minutes Stretched in real time. over a bunch of sessions, yeah. But I am beat to hell, so. Yeah. Well, we've been fighting since we fell down the uh, into this pocket dimension or whatever it is. Yeah, yeah. before that, because those giant birds puked on us. Mm -hmm. That was the last time we rested was just before that happened. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I guess translation, I'll start searching through these books and scrolls. Okay. Um, all right. And then Rohan and Casimir, what would you like to do? So you had set your watch and the, the period of sleep passed uneventfully. Only thing odd that you noticed was that those two monks, um, they settled into a cross-legged, seated position and that's how they remained through the time the rest of you were sleeping they had their eyes closed and they were breathing heavily but it seems to be how they decided to sleep but otherwise nothing else interesting occurs and so when you wake up refreshed and you've regained the appropriate amount of hit points what would you like to do well other than do my standard spell preparation let's see what is it we gain 10 back for hit points, Justin. Yeah, one hit point per level. So that, yeah, that puts me back to not just over half. <clears throat> yeah, I'll prepare my, my spells again. 
Okay, Graham, why don't you go ahead and uh, tell me how you'd go about searching these bookshelves. So in this room that you're in, this room is 20 by 20. And the, the section of the wall that the secret door was just the about the size of a regular door. But this room that you found yourself in um, is uh, 15 feet tall. And so are the bookshelves. So they're enormous and they're just completely full. Well, I think any book is attractive to Graham, but he might key on to something that has like uh, iron binding or, you know, something a little fancier or, or unusual. Okay. And even if he's got to attempt to, <clears throat> excuse me, attempt to climb up to try to get it. All right. <clears throat> So, um, so go ahead and do, um, a sir. No, let's do a spot. Okay. You do spot when you're looking around, um, you know, as a large amount of items tend to do when you're first looking at them, they, they sort of all just seem to be part of one mass of unidentified thing. And, uh, you know, you can't really pick out any details until you've zeroed in on something. And so you're looking around with that in mind that, you know, something with, you know, bindings that look special, like they would have taken more effort than, than others. And you do see one up near the uh, top shelf um, on this shelf here. So near the top of that, you spot one that, uh, that piques your interest. Oh, yeah, I'll start climbing up to get it likely without any concern for the condition of these bookshelves all right so the bookshelves are in good condition and they provide ample handholds but uh still ask for a climb check because there is the potential that you could use books for a handhold that would slide out of the shelf there oh that's the bluff you want the climb oh <laughs> You can't fake it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, you caught it. There's game master sense motive is pretty high. Uh, well, we you can just add one to it. It would be a nine instead of an eight. Okay. So, yeah, you managed to get up there and you grab a hold of that book and um, you can make your way back down to the floor and take a look at it. So let me let me see what you got here. Let me check my notes. Okay, so do a percentile roll for me. Oh, wow. All right. Let me give me one second here. All right, so um, Casimir and Rohan, um, so you're going about whatever you would do, preparing spells in Casimir's case or whatever. And uh, the monks, um, they've got their heads close together. They look like they're doing some sort of devotional or prayer because they're they're on their knees um, and they'll like lean forward towards the ground so their heads are almost touching. You can see their lips moving, but they're not saying anything. But they're obviously uh, occupied with that. And Fenrith is um, uh, getting ready to start casting some heal spells. You can see he looks like the Knight of Rest did very well for him so his cheeks aren't so hollow and and there's a sharper look to his eyes so he's looking over each of you to see how much healing is required <clears throat> um is he already asking to uh rest a second time <laughs> yeah <laughs> so do we take the damage again for re-equipping our armor we do upon activation yeah so once i've been fully rested and Got my spells prepared. That's right. I didn't make you guys roll to turn that up. Well, you guys wouldn't have needed to roll. Um, so, yeah, you know that once you, you know, repower it, it's going to do some damage. Okay. And then you had mentioned that some of the spells from the spell compendium might be fair game. I was wondering if this listening lore call is available. It's a boost to listen checks plus uh, blind sense blind sense of 30 feet and blind sight of 15. Mm. 
Uh, yeah, I'll take a look at that in a second. Let okay. me let me get. Um, Does it just let you know if there's a blind person nearby? <laughs> it it would do that, <laughs> but it does a little bit oh, more. Blind sense, like is that like tremor sense? Is that what that part is? Um, yeah, it's basically just an enhanced listening. Oh, okay. Um, so I can pinpoint where people are within thirty feet if they're making noise at all. Yeah, yeah, okay. All right, so Graham, this book you found. Um, let me get you a description of it. So what, so you open this book. All right. So first of all, it, it's really heavy and it's about eight inches thick. Right. And, uh, and so as you look at it, you can see that it's bound in, um, leather and it's got, um, arcane engravings on its cover, sort of like, like a gilding, right? It's like golden arcane uh, um, insignias and designs. Was the author Robert Jordan or Terry Goodkind? No, no, it was neither of them. But um, Justin's there telling me to I should read this book. Well, what's interesting about it is that uh, as like the dust didn't stay on it, right? Oh, okay. Like as soon as you moved it, like the dust just fell away, and you can see it's got you know gold bindings and. <clears throat> Um, looks to be in way better condition than it should be for its age and the environment. Um, so it's got, um, like some writing on the first page, but you don't, you don't understand the text. Like you can't, you don't speak what or read whatever language that is just at a glance. So, um, it's up to you what, what you want to do. You can definitely get the sense that it's very, it is very important. It has a feeling to it that that alerts you that there's something important about this thing. Well, you know, I'll be transfixed by the contents, even though I can't read them. So I might just flip through the pages for quite a while. And then I expect, as has been demonstrated in the past, that Graham would begin to get drowsy. And if it were an important moment and he was supposed to keep an eye on things, the GM would call for a, a will save. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I'd probably just drift off to sleep. You know, I'll set it down since it's heavy on the floor. I kind of use it as a pillow. Stretch out like on on my stomach. Put my chin in my or my yeah my chin in my hands and, and read it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So. um the in, the interesting thing is like you lay down, you put it out in front of you. You couldn't read that first page, but as you turn it, um, you can read what comes next, right? And uh, you're you are very tired, and so it feels to you like you're doing that thing where you you read a book without actually reading it. Yeah, like we've done in real life infinity times. So um, you know the words are popping into your eyes and you're moving along, but. Um, not a lot is setting in, but it is really interesting to you. So after you've done this for a bit, then you sort of start to pay more attention. Like you snap to it and you, your, your fatigue has sort of taken a back seat here and um, you're reading this book and you don't know who wrote it, but it is written in an instructional, an instructional style, right? Like, like, like the writer is talking to you, right? And so far, what it seems to be is uh, what should be boring, but isn't, but uh, um, an explanation of what it means to focus and pay attention and what things can help you to pay better attention and what things can um, hinder you from paying proper attention that's what it seems like it's about so far. Oh, it, it's already working. But there is um, there is an, also an undercurrent of um, the importance of instinct, trusting your instinct in your instincts and trusting perceptions that come from a, a baser part of your intellect than than your higher functions. Right. So as an example, it's talking about how a lot of times you can 
know things by smell, even though you don't consider your sense of smell to be all that good. And if you were forced to identify a smell, you wouldn't be able to, but like your subconscious or the deeper parts of your brain can recognize it. So that's what you've got so far. But after you read for about an hour, um, you're definitely hooked and you, it, you really want to keep reading it, but, um, that's when fatigue takes over, you know, pass out. Yeah. I don't know if I want Graham following through on his instincts. Didn't blood tooth give him the instinct to like stab us. <laughs> <laughs> well, the role playing tips for that is I don't really listen to blood tooth until I've used one of the gems in combat. And then he starts having more of a sway over me. Because I would go into those, you know, Brandon would make me go into a blood rage yeah, or whatever. Those were fun. I just haven't had the opportunity to do it again recently. So I'll put um, this book in your inventory. <laughs> Unfortunately, I drool an absurd amount and I wreck the rest of the book. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Nothing worse than drooling in your damn sleep. I hate it. Right. So we'll say that happened. Now, um, we'll, we'll skip to the part where you wake up. <clears throat> so you will have regained some hit points. Yeah, I changed them. And then, um, let's see, Fenrith. That means you can try the wand again now. Huh? 24 hours since my failure. Uh, you don't shave some, uh, some time off? <laughs> Come on, it's like a, you know, a GM, what is it, like a... Bonus, hey, you know, you're part of the GM circle, so you can kind of make that call. Right. <laughs> Eight hours of sleep, that's like 24 hours. Well, it's possible I slept longer. If nobody was, it disturbs me. Yeah, so Fenrith, he reactivates his his equipment, and um, you can see that causes him a good amount of pain, but then he comes by and um, he will start with healing you, Rohan. Okay. Um, will you roll the damage for me activating my armor and equipment as well? Yeah. yeah. Now, did you remove the resting hit points from your totals? Yep. I right, okay. took those off. Yeah. So do the same to me too. And I've already removed the resting as well. Okay. All right. So it cost you eight damage roll on, but I already put it on there. So don't. And eight to Casimir as well. Okay. All right. So can flick. No, we want. So he'll cast cure critical wounds on you, Rohan. Um, and heal you for 36 points. And then he'll do the same to you, Casimir. And heal you for 27. Nice. And he'll do the same to himself. Being the closest thing to a tank in the party, I should berate him. <laughs> Tell him he needs to keep me topped off. Which is funny, because healers in this game are just as tanky. Right. <laughs> AC-wise, anyway. All right. And then he'll come back to... You, Casimir. Was that a double roll accidentally? Yeah. Yeah. You hope. So I was at 24. So you'd be at 6. And then the other 18 would go to row on. So that puts you at 0 there. And then uh, he'll do be at zero hit points. one more on himself. Oh, nice. So then, um, yeah, so he'll do that healing there. And uh, then he says, all right, we're ready to go. I'll nod and thank him. And I guess we're going through the trap door, right? Is that the plan? Yeah. Okay. Um, so on the use of that spell, Brandon, the listening lore call. Oh, right. So that, what was that? What, what book was that from? Uh, the spell compendium. Okay. Say level two ranger druid spell. Uh, you gain the description is you feel conscious of your ears as they warm noticeably. Sounds that seem as though they should be muffled become clear to you. 
Gain a plus four insight bonus to listen checks. And in addition, if you have five or more ranks in listen, you gain blind sense out to 30 feet. If you have 12 or more ranks, you gain blind sight out to 15. A silence spell or effect negates it. Um, and I do have 12 ranks in listen. Okay. Yeah, you can use that. Yeah, I've just been looking for either a dark vision or something that I can use so I don't have to have my light active to, to scout ahead a little bit. You should have said something. I think I got dark vision. What, what was it called again? Listening lore call. Yeah, okay, I found it. Hmm, I haven't learned it yet. I know I've been looking at it because I figured Graham might want that in a ring. Yeah. Next time we get a day, I'll transcribe it into my book. Yeah, with how much time we spend in dungeons, mm -hmm. something that makes it so I can see in the dark would be nice. Yeah. Well, I just figure it makes our jobs easier if everything comes to us. <laughs> yeah. But twice now uh, in this dungeon, we've had uh, times where just walking along, all of a sudden an enemy is in our light vision. Yeah, so you've got blind sight to 15 feet. Yeah. And sense to 30. Blind sense, I mean. Okay. Yeah, you can learn that spell. You can know that spell. Okay. So, yeah, I'll have that prepared and ready. All right. And then into the darkness we go. All right. So, yeah, the um, the monks finish whatever it is that they're doing, and they they stand up and they indicate they're ready to go as well. Right now, they're investigating that hatch, which doesn't seem to have a lock on it. It's just, um, it's got an iron handle on it. So who wants to lead? Uh, I guess I will. Okay. Unless uh, you want to be up there with me too, Rohan, or at least close enough to keep a listen and a lookout. Yeah, I'll be right behind you. All right. So yeah, I'll go over to the trap door and I'll give a tug at this iron handle. All uh, right. Whatever. Yeah, so you pull that open and you're faced with a um a ladder set into um uneven cavern walls that leads down. So as far down as you can see, um it begins to curve. So it's it's not like a straight hole. Okay. But there is room for one person. Well, there's room for one of you at a time to go down. All right. So yeah, I'll, uh, but it wouldn't, it's not that tight. It's like, you know, a, a large creature could probably go down. Okay. So yeah, I'll, uh, put my, uh, feet on the first rung and start going down. All right. Then who's next? I'll go next. All right. We're going to have Fenrith bring up the rear. Okay. Yeah, might as well. Cause I think even the, well, not that I'd know it, but the monks are probably even better at listening and spotting than than he is maybe <laughs> does have a pretty high wisdom these days yeah yeah uh so fenrith will bring up the rear and then you start making your way down so um it's it's big enough that like a large creature could manage to squeeze its way down so it's it's not uncomfortable it does have a a, a snaky structure to it it goes you know it doesn't just go straight down and there are times where you're like um, almost horizontal moving along this ladder, but it doesn't shake. It's not rusted. And so you make your way easily enough. And eventually, um, after just about five minutes of going down this ladder, you reach a point where it, it does begin to straighten out quite a bit and it leads you, um, down to about, you know, five feet from the floor of a, another cavern. This one is about the same size as the one you were in. And, um, it's also rough and unworked and it has a single exit out of it. Okay. And so, you know, in short order, everybody's hopped down off of the ladder and, um, and then there's just the one way to go down a, a corridor, I guess would be the term for a tunnel. And, um, that too is, is there's plenty of room to walk through and uh, it'd be room for you if you were quite a bit taller. So it's probably about 10 feet tall and you know, the five feet wide okay. of, of rough stone. 
And that brings you very quickly to here. So um, now you've you've entered a, a wider area, but it retains the same basic look and you know the the rough rough stone walls and a dirt and stone floor. Okay. But that's where you are now. Yeah, time to keep trekking on, I guess. Okay. All right. So yeah, now you've reached um, you've reached here, Casimir. When um, you see that uh, there's sort of a branch here, a little bit um, down into the left, or continuing along on your way. So the floor here is um, it's like almost gravel. Mm. It's really difficult to be quiet. Like ev every movement makes that crunching noise of of the smaller stone chips under your feet. And uh, a lot of things are familiar. It's got that same um, familiar temperature that you, that you experience when you're underground um, where it's really steady and, and generally stays the same. So you'd be able to tell by now in your adventuring career that you have, you're deep enough, obviously for the temperature to be pretty much uniform, but not deep enough for where it starts to warm up. Yeah. So, but yeah, you've reached this little juncture here. All right. I guess we don't really know what we're looking for, so we've got to look for everything. So yeah. I'll just start uh, heading down this way. So can I see any tracks or any sign of uh, movement? Uh, go ahead and roll. Yeah, I'll let uh, Rohan do that before uh, I start going off. Okay. Just a second. It's all right. Track. Do you want a spot or track skill? Your track, I guess. Okay. Why is it acting weird? There we go. Finally. All right. So no, um, you know, because of the the gravel and how much of it there is, I mean, it's just impossible to say what was a footprint and what's just the way it fell, or you know. Yeah. So. Right now, you're not seeing any sign of that. Okay. Just kind of wanted to see what I could see. Yeah. So, Casimir, you, uh, he's looking at the ground, and you move up, and you you found a dead end here. Okay. There isn't anything in there worth taking a look at. Um, let's see. Let's get... Yeah. So, Casimir and Rohan. Casimir, you're about here on your way to that, you know, down further down when you, you both hear loud crunching of gravel up ahead around the corner. All right. <laughs> so, um, Casimir to you, I mean, just sounds like loud crunching of gravel from someone walking, but Rohan, you can detect that there's multiple sets of footsteps up there. So, you know, you guys are both like, you got your ears, prick to listen better and these um these monks both come up and they see you're like that and they they drop into a stance and they're listening as well and then you know fenrith comes stomping up <laughs> well I, he's not alone in that <laughs> yeah yeah you know so this steel of his boots scrape on the gravel as he as he stops and he's sparks fly with every looking step. ahead yeah exactly <laughs> 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 All right. Um, but you definitely hear some something approaching up ahead. Well, Rohan, should we take up combat stance and maybe try and ambush him? That's what I was thinking. Yeah, or send you up ahead, see if you can be stealthy enough to to spot him. I don't have a whole lot of faith in my ability to be stealthy in this. All right. So, what do you want to do? I was thinking, worst comes worst, I can just kind of occupy maybe that area like a choke point yeah that could work or <clears throat> if they're coming this way we could hide in that little cavern dead end that you found and ambush them when they go past that works too we also use that area as a choke point too yeah keep you behind me in that one the only thing i don't like about that is it's a dead end and we have no way of retreating is All this right. natural stone Yep. It's dead okay. end for you. You have a way of retreat. <laughs> <laughs> That's something else I could do. I believe I remain conscious of what's outside. Yeah. So I could meld into the stone. 
just kind of sit there. All right. So, yeah. So you guys are like, you know, whispering these, this to each other, you know, trying to figure out what you're going to do. Now, Graham, you've woke up, you know, that book's laying there on the ground in front of you, but uh, you feel refreshed. You feel like you regain 10 hit points, (laughs) you know? So I've marked your sheet appropriately. Oh, I already did it. <clears throat> so I am at 39. Okay. Yeah. So you wake up and um, there you are. You realize that it, it you were so tired or so engrossed that you didn't, you don't remember how you got the, like your equipment to let go of you so that you could get to sleep, but somehow you did. So when you wake up, once again, you're feeling that absence of blood tooth, you know, so, but there you are. What do you want to do? Well, I want to look around uh, this room a little bit more. Okay. You know, maybe be, be for about 30 minutes and then it will dawn on me that I still have to rescue all my companions from wherever they are in this complex. So, yeah, I'll begin by searching. How much does that book weigh by the by? The by? Um, it's gonna be fun if it messes up my ability to tumble and whatnot. <laughs> it does. It weighs five pounds. Okay. Yeah. So just uh, thirty minutes of searching. You know, maybe I can find because when I, I'll think to heal myself with that wand, but it's still rubbery. Yeah. So I'll see if I can search out. Maybe there's scrolls here. I've been learning how to read those. Okay. I just need one that can cure me. I like the picture of that as being like uh, Graham going like, Hey, Casimir, can you help me read these scrolls? <laughs> and Casimir's like, yeah, sure. And uh, then it's just Casimir berating <laughs> you for like a half hour. <laughs> <laughs> Whapping your knuckles with like a stick. Yeah. <laughs> with his trident. <gasps> All right. Um, yeah, so you want to look for another half hour? You want to do another search check? Or yeah, what? sure. Yeah, I'm specifically searching out s- some way to get me more hit points in a metagame sense. But I suppose any any interesting scroll will do. All right. <clears throat> so with that search check, you do you go to a section that seems to be where most of the scrolls are. I mean, you can see one or two here and there, but one section of one of the shelves seems to be mostly scrolls or just loose sheaths of paper, right? And um, roll a, D, a percentile for me. All right, and then another. All right, and then one more. All right, so the first... One you find um, now. Are you able to read scrolls? I can with a use magic um, device check. Okay. I can. I think I can even read the spells and spell books. I just can't prepare them with the same ability. Okay. Yeah, because it like... works exactly like spellcraft. All right. Okay, well, yeah. we'll do your read magic device later. Let's do the scroll. Let's get the scrolls you find out of the way first. It takes a full round action to. So, like, when I pick up the scroll, that's the amount of time it takes for me to identify it if it's not plainly labeled or something like right. that. Right. Yeah. Okay. What is the DC to identify it? 20, I think. All right. Well, go ahead. Do it Do it on this one, then. We'll just do it that way. Could be 25. I'll double check it here in a sec. And then there's always the pesky spell level. I don't know if that... <laughs> right, if that factors in. I think that comes more into the casting. Let me pull it up here. Yeah, so it is actually 25 plus the spell level, so they could be quite difficult. But that first roll, I got a 33. Yeah, so that you you can tell then you have found a speak with the dead scroll. And I'll, um, I'll put it in your inventory. Hang on a second. Okay, yeah. So that's in your inventory then. I speak with dead scroll. And now give me two... You find two other scrolls that you're certain are, you know, magical in nature. So give me two percentiles. All 
All right. So um, the other one you found, well, I guess you got it. Yeah. Do, do two more rolls for your used magic, whatever. So that one, the third one, it would be a mystery to me. Okay. But the second one is a, where are you? Is there a level limit to what ones you can identify? Well, it would be the upper limit to what I roll, which with a 20. It's uh, 20 plus level of the spell. Uh, 25 plus level of the spell. So I guess that would be ninth level. Then. Yeah. Okay. All right. So that other one you find that you can identify is um god where was it ah there we are that's a scroll of heal Ooh, that was the thing that saved maddox a time or two hmm. so that's uh is that the aoe one no it's the like 100 hit point plus one. Oh, it's like the base 100 hit point yeah no well, graham's gonna sip on that scroll <laughs> <laughs> he'll lose three hit points and use it get poisoned from the ink it was written in <laughs> so i'll put that also in your inventory it also ends all these effects yeah it's a it's a huge one yeah well i mean he's still i got a fair intelligence so i think would it be wisdom though <clears throat> no you're right i'm just saying oh. for how he might determine oh. to use it but if he gets like in a panic, he might throw it out there. So yeah, I think yeah. since he's in a, safely in a room, he'll be like, oh, I'll tuck this away for later. But then he'll get damaged by a rat. Use it. Nah. And that's deciphered. Oh. Hey, it cures insanity. And then I'll put the other scroll that you found in your inventory and we'll identify it later. Yeah, and you know, once I've gone through that, that's probably when it will dawn on me that, you know, I have to find my way out of this mess <laughs> well, now i'm hearing you do the casimir impersonation <laughs> running out of time gotta keep moving <laughs> what would casimir do why am i suddenly hitting myself what does a medium load did it already do the check penalties i think it does automatically yeah, I think so too. I don't remember a light load being minus four. Yeah, like uh, it's actually pretty decent at all that stuff. All right, so it's an unidentified item in your inventory there. And uh, so those are the only ones you find while you're looking around that appear like they're magical in nature. Okay. Well, y'all put them all into my inventory, and I suspect that book actually makes my uh, backpack... Like I, maybe I can't close it all the way, <laughs> so I, I have to move a little bit more carefully. Starts uh, pulling on the straps, right? Because uh, I uh, I can't. I don't think I can tumble with a medium load or higher. Okay, we'll and take a look. Certain other skills. Okay, so yeah, you got those uh, scrolls put into your inventory, Graham. Okay, thank you, and. With all my sen sen her senses, there we go, as heightened as they can be, and being as stealthy as I can be, I'll venture out of this area. Okay. And I'll head off towards the east. Okay. Running slow for me here. All right, so you come over here. <clears throat> You've got this, um, as you step out, you still got this door here. Oh, I see straight across. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I guess I'll stop at it and put my ear to the door, see if I can hear anything on the other side. Okay. Um, yeah, so do a listen then. Uh, you don't hear anything on the other side. Well, I'll ignore it for now and keep traveling down the hallway. Okay. Yeah, so you come around this hallway, you can see there's this, like, uh, it looks just like a well, you know, with the... the the stand and a bucket and then you continue on and you come to this junction here you can see up ahead another rounded room and uh you can see there's a door to the north of this one that you're in okay <clears throat> as i'm traveling if i see any of those parts that it was easy well no i guess i'll stay down here for now yeah i'll head up to that door and see if i can hear anything on the other side all right Okay, so you put your 
ear to that door and listen. Um, we'll just use that same listen. You don't hear anything there either. Uh, I'll try to open this one a crack, stick my head through. Okay. So you open that a crack and you look down and you see that there's like, um, sort of like a platform, like a, like a higher section on just one part of the room and then some stairs leading up to it. Okay. I'll go explore it a little bit more. Yeah. So up here you get a better view of the room. And, um, you can see there's a chair up there and, uh, you know, some, some personal items, uh, the chair and the area around, it looks like it's been used quite a bit, but the corners they're, you know, dusty, the corners up on that platform. Now the ground floor that you're on is not dusty. Um, that shows a lot of sign of footprints going to and fro. And then from where you're standing off to the right, you can see a, um, an iron prison style door right here. Okay. I'll go take a closer look at that. Yeah. So you walk up to there and, um, so you can see into a couple of the cells from where you are two or three, there's one at the end and then two on either side. And then you can tell that there's two more that you can't see into. I don't see any occupants. Though. No, no, no occupants in the ones that you can see. <clears throat> Well, I'll circle around the room, look into the cells. How's the locking mechanisms work? Well, they this that is locked. This Are one they? you're oh, is it in front of now is locked. Yeah. Yeah. Let me see if I can get that one open. I'll search it for any traps too. Okay. All right. Yeah. So you don't find any traps there, and it's pretty easy to get it open. So that that slides noisily open. <laughs> And allows you entry there. So yeah, inside the room are all these cells like the individual lock or do they have some sort of... Yeah, they're individual. Okay. Yeah. But um, yeah, so from here, you don't, you don't see any evidence of prisoners and you, you actually see, you actually can detect that um, it's been cleaned pretty recently. All right. So... Um, at that point, you're in there, and you hear footsteps approaching from back the way you came. What's in the center of the room there? Is that like a drain? It is, yeah. <clears throat> is it big enough to, or would it seem possible for me to get into it? Um, Do I want to go into? You'd have to <laughs> take a closer look at but no, as you look at it, you can see that it, I mean, because this is prison cells, it's, it's, you don't see any way you could open it without cutting the bars. Okay. Well, then I'll just hide around the corner here. If your escape artist is high enough, you can fit in about anywhere. Yeah. The epic level ones you can fit in like, like, like an octopus that's two inches or something. Yeah, it's like, like a brick that. size. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so, Casimir and Rohan. So you guys heard that approaching footsteps up ahead, and so you wanted to move back here? Yeah, yeah. and signal to the others to kind of take up a, a spot where we're slightly hidden. Yeah, and I'll ready my trident. Okay. Did we want to kill our lights or? Yeah. Okay, I'll do that too. All right, so then um, if you did that, how would you see? After I move. But I'm guessing we're probably going to spring this trap by sound. Got you. Okay. Which I will point out to Rohan that many of these creatures seem to see just fine in the dark. Yeah. <laughs> but don't need to give away our location with bright light as well. All right. Just imagining it's two inch square. <laughs> DC 80 though. What is that like? Yeah, it's about the width of your hand. Yeah. That'd be only a one inch if you're small, so a halfling could do a one inch square. I'd like to picture it almost like, a, or is it from the Wheel of Time, the golems? Oh, right, where they uh, could yeah. squeeze it like under the doors and stuff. Yeah, because I, I guess the problem is it's square, but you could get two inches easily over the width of a door. Yeah. So 
but you're, you're essentially boneless at that point. <laughs> All right. So you guys, uh, you take up your hidden positions then and you kill your lights. So then you're left in darkness, utter, complete darkness. <sighs> yeah. Then I'll ready my trident and wait, listening to the sounds of them footsteps getting closer, hopefully. Okay. Or unfortunately, I don't know. Yeah. I like the idea of Fenrith just being a puppet right now. We just put our hands in his back and start chanting. All right. So, um, where are you? So you do, um, while you're hidden there, you, you hear those, um, approaching footsteps around that corner up ahead. And now, um, they've come to a stop and, uh, you hear them talking to each other. Would you mind sharing that map again? Yeah, hang on. Or what was the name of it? There you go. All right. Yeah, so they're talking to each other. Casimir, you recognize the language um, as goblin, so you can hear what they're saying. So uh, the first voice said um, they're supposed to be coming this direction, and then another voice says, well... Why are we going to get in their way? They already fought a dragon. And then you hear a, a deeper, more gruff voice say, because it'd be worse if we didn't. Now, be quiet and pay attention. They've got to be up here somewhere. And um, once again, the footsteps start up. So what did you guys want to do? Did you want to... What was your plan? Um, my plan was to most likely either wait till they got close, like where I could tell they were in the general vicinity in front of me mm -hmm. and key my lights or for some sort of other sign, like perhaps from Rohan or something. Okay. Yeah. Well, uh, make sure that where you are on the map is where you wanted to be. Yep. Unless Chris, do you want to pull yourself back a little bit farther in? <laughs> I'd like to be in where you are. Sure. So that way I block the, uh, yeah, I just wanted to be in a space where I could five foot out and have clear line of fire of most of that. Oh, okay. Wait. Some of these lighting effects still trip me out. Like suddenly Fenrith disappeared from the map and mm. All right. So yeah, they um they continue to move forward. Um now they're getting closer and closer for sure. You can um you can get the sense they're probably about thirty feet away now. Okay. Uh so yeah, I'll kinda of tap him on the shoulder and as a signal that they're close. Okay. Yeah, I'll key my lights and Okay, so yeah, they get they get up to that point and then they they all stop suddenly and you can from this distance you can hear the sound of loud sniffing mm. in the air. Anyway, um let me make a roll or two here. Readying for a charge is the D D equivalent of holding your fist out for your younger sibling. <laughs> And yep. letting them run into it. I'm just going to stand here like this. Mom, Chris hit me. No, I didn't. She ran into it. Yeah. I got a pretty good beating on the kid for doing that to my little brother. Because <laughs> he was chasing me and I just stopped and put my foot out behind me. And he ran full force into it right mid gut. Oh, man. All right. So, yeah, they get up to, uh, you know, they come to a stop and you can't see exactly where they are because it's dark, but they do come to a stop and you can hear the sound of uh, loud sniffing at the air. And then you hear um, one of them, Casimir, says right there. I mean, you don't know who they're pointing at. but okay. So I guess even without Rohan's uh, tap on the shoulder, mm -hmm. I'd still be uh, key in my light. Yeah. So, yeah, go ahead and roll initiative. Everybody. Graham, that means you too. Well, this is actually probably Graham. Oh, nice. Three. <laughs> Why are you not rolling there? No, oh, that was me. <laughs> Just occurred to me I should have closed the main door into this jail before I hid. Okay, Rohan, your turn. All right. So, hearing that we've been spotted, I'll tap Casimir on the shoulder really quick as I step forward, flip on my lights, and then take aim at the bugbear sergeant for a 
full volley, three arrows. All right. All right. So you step out and let loose three arrows, all of which hit, or sorry, two hit and one miss. Okay. So, you know, that one that missed ignites some sparks as it slams into the wall and skitters down further down the tunnel. But go ahead and roll damage. There's the first one. And oh, wait, these are goblins, aren't they? These are bugbears. Or, yeah, that's a bugbear. Okay. Is he in the goblinoid family? Yeah. Okay, then I need to add two points of damage to each of those for her favorite enemy. Um, hang on a second before you do that. Should automatically do it if they fit. Uh, I see the one for animals, but I also have bugbear or goblinoids, and I think the other one was ab abjur or um, yeah, animals, human goblinoids, and aberrations. I always play elf rangers so I can take human as one and not have to be evil. <laughs> Why would you have to be evil? I believe that's part of the common oh. like things is you don't. You can't take your own race unless you're evil is usually how it works, right? Like evil rangers will usually pick their own race. Well, how can you be a bounty hunter? Okay, then? I've added that damage. Anything else you want to... And I put that effect on you now, so okay. it should uh, be automatic. Yeah, that's it. Okay. So let's see. Get the combat tracker up and move on. All right. Yep, that's my turn. All right. <clears throat> so this, um, the older monk, each charges out there. And uh, attacks this one in the in the lead. This one that he attacks is definitely the one that's in charge. He's taller, for one thing. He looks like he's better fed, and his equipment is much better as well. Uh, but this monk runs up and starts throwing kicks and punches and knees at him. So this um, bugbear that he's attacking has a um, a long spike chain in his hand that he's you know whirling around to defend himself. Uh, but the Hobgoblin does manage to get through his defenses. And um, this guy in the back pops around to uh, engage this monk with his morning star. And uh, he slips past that monk's defenses and hits him with that morning star. So uh, that brings us to Graham. <laughs> Stab him, Graham. The ultimate sneak attack. You're not even not in the even area. Here. This other uh, this other bugbear as well will attack that one. It'll take uh, two swings at him. Uh, but both of his miss. So um, luckily the hobgoblin is able to defend himself. And now bring us to the um, sergeant who's got a couple arrows sticking in him and this... Um, Monks managed to hit him pretty good. And um, he shouts out, fight to the death. And then he just takes off running back down the hallway. <laughs> and you can hear his, you know, f footprints as he makes his way down the hallway at a fast pace. And uh, then this younger monk, he rushes out to aid his father. How far can you throw your net? 20 feet, I believe. Well, not to double check. We're going to need to start using that on enemies so they can't run away. Oh, yeah. I usually try to. And that brings us to Fenrith. <clears throat> All right, so Fenrith will... I think you skipped me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. How did that happen? The better question is, how did Fenrith throw lower than Casimir on initiative? Uh, that is a good question. Casimir, your turn. All right. <laughs> so I can't see too well what's up there so i'm gonna first have to move to there all right yeah so now you can see the two monks are engaged in battle with these two bugbears and then i'll move to there and i'll attack is that warrior two yeah all right there we go all right so you're able unable to get past his defenses on that one all right that's my turn all right so fenrith will cast a spell upon all of you. Because he's in NPC mode, we should have sewn his lips shut so he couldn't pray <laughs> unless we uh, needed it. Only healing spells, Fenrith. 
Yeah, so what he does is prayer. So it'll give you a plus one to some stuff. And that'll be his turn to bring us back to Rohan. Uh, it centered on me in a spot that I wasn't. So let's give me just a second to find where I am again. There we go. Um, <clears throat> so if I s- take another step up into the hallway, can I see where the, their leader went? No, you can't see him. You can see that he rounded that corner, but... Okay. Um, well, actually, no. You wouldn't be able to see that far, would you? No. All right. So then I will... Twerk. Yeah, you would. You'd, you'd see that he rounded that. You can hear that he rounded that corner, too. Okay. But yeah, he's he's not within sight anymore. Um, so I've got that bugbear two surrounded. I'll target bugbear one. Okay. And three arrows will go shooting through. Why did they do it twice? Uh, just the first three should count. That's three hits. Okay. Um, so let's see. Just, that's two. And I uh, take off the, the 13 points for that last one. For some reason, it's only responding when I double click and then it rolls twice. Um, I think you got the wrong one targeted. Bugbear one? Yeah, I see. You can. Yeah, because you got them both targeted. Oh, did it hit the yeah. the boss one? Mm-hmm. Oh. All right, so how much damage was it total? Um, 42? Uh, with all four, it was, what, 55? But 42 sh- of what is what it should have been. 55 total. We'll take that off of there. Yay, one of my favorite enemies finally came back around. <laughs> yeah, goblins are a good pick. I mean... Yeah. Eventually, you can just start going up against hobgoblins only, and they're, they're militaristic enough to pose a challenge all the way, all the way up. Yeah. So you um, you put three arrows into this this warrior here in the back, and that drops him. Artillery fire incoming. All right. Yeah, that's the end of my turn. So on to the hobgoblin or bugbear. No hobgoblin monk. Mm-hmm. It's apparently got Gatling guns for fists. Yeah. Well, you're one to talk, man. They're, they're essentially doing the same thing you are. Yeah. Just not at 110 feet from a range increment. <laughs> that said, I believe they can. it's easier for them to buff their damage. Yeah. Yeah, that's one thing that's hard about the arrows. And I don't really have enough with strength to really get too much of a bonus from those composite longbows. Yeah. I should look into getting one of those, though, because I could make use of it. Yeah. I can pull an extra one damage out of it, which makes That's a difference. Significant, yeah. Especially if you're shooting, like, three arrows. Yeah. Next level will be four. Yeah. Yeah, so this uh, monk hits this remaining bugbear, and the bugbear retaliates. But he's not able to get past that monk's defenses, and... uh you can hear screaming in a deep voice from down that way. And Casimir, you hear, um, they're down here. Everybody, come on, they're down here. Hmm. And let's see. <coughs> this vaguely reminds me of uh, 13th Warrior mm. when they're down in the caves. Yeah, so that other... Um, the older monk uh, just hammers that bugbear's head into paste, and he falls to his death. Brings us to Casimir. All right. With no enemies immediately around, I will cast shield on myself and prepare for the uh, oncoming charge. Okay. Oh, didn't roll the... Uh... Actually, I guess I can target myself on that. Is that what that's supposed to be doing there? Looks like it... Uh... Did I get my... I didn't roll that either. Okay. Uh, percentile. All right. So I cast shield. Okay. And that's my turn. Put that effect on, or did it put it on you? I don't know. I just, yeah, it looks like it did. Okay. And that's my turn. Click. All right, Graham. So um, you step out of the way to hide here. Henrik. And then you, you continue to hear the footsteps approaching, but they've got like a unhurried lang- languid approach to the sound 
uh, sound to to them, like they're just out for the nicest stroll with no care in the world. I like to believe that this bugbear was overly paranoid and constantly calling that <laughs> we, the heroes were there with every shadow, and now they're like. Uh. <laughs> Well, I have a moment of panic when I realize I should have closed the door into this room. And now I'm trying to gauge whether or not I have enough time to dart out there. But then I remember how loud it was. and I realize I'll just have to live with my error. Yeah, so what you hear now is the um, as as the footsteps approach and get closer, they're like... um, uh, The way that they ring on the stone floor, it's like heels, right? Like sharp heels not a not like a a warrior's boot but you know some of the sharper heels that you've seen people wear and uh they come to a stop right at that door that you were wishing you had closed yeah i'll make sure i have blood tooth ready i'll unconsciously split him into two as well okay i'll risk a peek around the corner of you know, they just stopped to talk or something like that. All right. So you peek around the corner or as you're about to peek around the corner, I should say, you hear the loud clang of the door shutting. <laughs> I'll be crestfallen. Oh, no. I accidentally uh, imprisoned myself. Oh, wait. That's right. You hear a woman's sultry voice saying, uh, hello. Uh-oh. So when you peek around the corner, you see that that woman in red. Oh no! From the encounter in the throne room, and uh, she's got the door closed, and uh, <laughs> she's looking at you with a smile on her face. Well, I, I guess I'll step halfway out and be like, uh, "Hello." Uh, she says, "It looks like you're trapped." And she smiles, and as she does, you see that her teeth are, um, her canine teeth are elongated, sharp fangs. Oh, no. You look at her eyes, and you see there's red red to those as well that seem at first like it was just a reflection of the light on her clothing, which is all red. But now that you take a closer look, you see that her eyes are indeed red she's got a little smile on her face quite a predicament you're in yeah you you think you could uh, tell me how to get out of here i mean after my sentence is over (laughs) 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 don't gotta worry about anything i'm secure in here since you closed that door but uh you don't seem so bad (laughs) um Yeah, so she smiles at you, and uh, she, you know, puts her hand up and crooks her finger at you and motions you to approach her. Well, I'll move, let's say, 10 feet away from her, and I'll stop there, and I'll be like, "Uh, I'm not entirely sure about you, lady. Oh, you really shouldn't be. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Do you have any idea what they do to you? If they found you here? Uh, kill me? No, no, much worse. What are you talking about? Much worse. Today's your lucky day. I'm going to let you go, but you have to promise to do something for me in return. Well, what do I got to promise? I I need to know before I can make that promise. All right. Um, Uh, yes. (laughs) Death by snoo snoo. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, um, Graham, you uh, you don't know what happens. You sort of blink, and um, you're you know some time has passed. You can't tell how much. You feel sort of drunk, but when you come to, you're standing right in front of her there, and uh, she's looking at you, and she says, "Now, remember what we agreed to." And then she walks over to here and just disappears. Poof. (laughs) I'll be like, I I can't remember. She's gone. 
Yeah, right. <laughs> so you don't know what she's talking about. Uh, it's a weird experience for you. But you've experienced, you know, you've had something like this happen with vampires before, if you remember. Yeah. Um, it's a lot like that, just much stronger. So um, you get the sense that you did agree to something. You just, you don't know what it was. Uh-huh. <laughs> Graham has the charisma and the willpower of a common Twilight main character. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll stand there for a little while trying to figure out what she was talking about. And he's like, well, I, I didn't agree anything. And I think uh, by law, that means I don't have to to do anything. And I'll <laughs> just try to leave and forget this ever happened. All right. And by the time I get to the exit of this room... It will be out of your mind. (laughs) (laughs) You know, that costs like extra levels if I was doing that with a weave in the Wheel of Time (laughs) and you just do it willingly. (laughs) Okay. Yeah, so that's what you think to yourself. And so you set out. It's uh, unclear to you how much time has passed when you find yourself here looking at this um, strange thing on the floor in front of you. Um, you can't you can't remember precisely how you got here or the intervening space, but here you stand, and there's this circular um, indentation on the floor with this sort of blade-like appearance to, to it. Well, um, we call it an aperture on the island. Right, yeah, that word pops into your head. Yeah, just, aperture, huh? Does it sound like Casimir? <laughs> right. Remember, Graham, apertures. <laughs> Learn it. And uh, you know, there's a lever over to the right of it. But this is where you find yourself the next time you're you're fully conscious of what's going on. Oh, okay. Um, and uh, you know, it it feels good because that that lever is exactly what you were looking for. Okay. Well, then it stands the reason I should go pull the lever. But I will search around. I mean, it's probably just going to open this aperture, but... Why do I keep saying that word? (laughs) Remember. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, Gazimir. Yeah, I'll search it for any mechanisms that are going to shoot spears into my body or boulders to rain down and crush my bones or pits to drop me another six miles. (laughs) All right. Yeah. So you go over there and you look around, but, um, go ahead and roll a search. Yeah. You don't, you don't find anything that makes you suspicious. All right. Let's crank on that lever with great abandon. Uh, Rogues never find anything suspicious. (laughs) 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 <laughs> all right so you um you pull that lever and uh you know the ground starts to shake oh no i've really done it this time <laughs> you don't know that it could be a good thing that the ground is shaking now <clears throat> all right rohan your turn does this mean i defeated dracula all right so you do know that the the one bugbear leader ran off and he was shouting something so it's a reasonable to assume He's shouting for help. So I'll uh, kind of give a questioning glance at Casimir and say, are we staying here to defend? Uh, can I reply or do I got to wait for my turn? You can reply. Yes, he's calling for reinforcements. All right. And I'm going to throw out an entangle. Okay. I'm still targeting that thing. Bugbear. All right. But I'm going to cast it. Um, it's a 40 foot radius. So that's. Pretty dang huge. So it's going to affect everything in this area. All right. And that'll be my turn. But that should help slow down how many can get to us at a time. So yeah, little tiny tendrils of vines and stuff that were almost unnoticeable. They become full-blown creepers that ensnare. Yep. So yeah, anything that, that walks into there will have to make a, a dexterity or a reflex. Right. Okay. Um, Not a very hard reflex save, but... Was it 13? Um, 
No, you got to have a high decent wisdom, right? Yeah, it's a still just a fourteen. Yeah, it's not that because it's only a first level spell. What did you say? Fourteen. Yeah. Then even if they do make it, it's a half speed, I believe. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, um, so you cast that out there, and uh, then the monks are going to wait and see what happens. But uh, now you know you don't hear any approaching footsteps yet. And Casimir, it's your turn. Uh, can I see the radius of Rohan's entanglement, or is it hard to discern for me? Well, I mean, you can you can't see the radius. You can just see the areas of the visible. Yeah, like, uh, okay, uh, so I was just asking if I could see where it began or... or yeah, you can see where it is right in front of you. Yeah. Okay, so I'll five foot to there and cast or attempt to cast mirror image on myself. Okay. All right, so uh, I believe it's 1d4 plus 2 for me right now. Let me find it. Uh, and that's my turn. So. All right. Okay, Fenrith, or I mean Graham, so you pull this um, lever and this aperture starts to move and forms into a staircase leading upwards. We'll I'll make a sound of happy surprise and start heading up those stairs. All right. Um, yeah, so you start walking up those steps and then... You guys hear another voice from down the hallway. This one feminine. Again, in that language that you feel like you should be able to understand, but can't quite. Um, She obviously sounds angry. All right. Yeah, so you hear um, whatever she's saying. It definitely takes on the tone of uh, casting a spell. And then when that spell ends, she shouts something else. This is definitely like a command. And now you definitely hear approaching uh, foot footprints from many different feet. And uh, as as you watch now, let me make sure something real quick. Yeah. All right. So you start to hear many boot prints approach, you know, knocking all this loose rock aside and stomping on the ground. And the rattle of chains and plate and weapons. And um, Rohan, you watch the uh, the ground sort of shimmers and all those vines just wither and disappear. Now, that spell, is yeah, it sustained? I uh, no. It, once I cast it, it's out there. Okay. But now I'm angry. <laughs> My little dinky spells. <laughs> yeah. My level one spell was taken away. That said, though, it's been fairly useful yeah but now we know there's just some sort of a sorcerer with them as well yeah so then you guys can see more bugbears start coming around the corner so the first ones you see are all carrying spears and then you see the familiar sight behind them of that one that that leader that went running away screaming and you can sort of see more behind them even approaching down the hallway with their weapons drawn this is where we need a fireball. That's why I have a wand of it. Yay. So they're like forming up here, these spearmen, right? That's why formations don't work all that great in magic laden. We say as we're standing in a perfect line. Yeah. Not quite perfect. They're That's only... pretty dang perfect. It is. It's if, close. If it's a cone, we're a heft. <laughs> and that will bring us to... Rohan, but that will be the end of tonight's game session. Thanks, man. Yeah, thanks. Mm -hmm. Now I have a secret mission. This has been a Death Watch production. Thank you for listening. Mm -hmm.